breads and uh, cakes baked with choux pastry is really an odd concoction. You take some uh, dough and then you boil it. And when you have boiled it, you bake it. And it's, well, it's easier I show you. But it has the advantage it becomes hollow, so you can fill it up with cream. And, uh, well, let's see. And this is a basic recipe with practically no ingredients. Butter, egg and flour. Water. We need to melt the butter in the water. So add it to a pan. The order doesn't really matter if the butter melts a little bit before you add the water. Stir a little bit. That makes it melt faster. And then we need to bring it to a, a vigorous boil. So it, has, it is as hot as possible. Then we add the flour. And stir well. And this is going to become more and more difficult as the as the flour bakes. Yeah, I don't know what you call it when it's in a pot like this. Bakes, boils, gets heated. Um, but we have to make it into a dough that looks like this. And now we need to let it cool a little bit. Because if we add eggs to a very hot dough, they will uh, immediately cook and coagulate and will just get lumps of cooked egg. So we add, we wait until you can uh, put your finger into the dough and keep it there for a little while. Then it's usually the right temperature. And we add one egg at a time. And uh, I can tell you exactly why we have to do that, because that's the way my mother taught me. I don't know really, if, don't know really, really know if it's necessary, but I, I do it like this. You can try, add all the eggs. But uh, I add one egg at a time, then I stir until it's a homogenous dough again. And then one more egg. But, but also you don't add all the eggs. I know, I know that because you have to uh, check out the consistency of the dough. You don't want it to be too runny. Uh, you want it to be just right. And now you can see it starts to uh, stick together and, and look like a, a, a dough. A sort of a, a wet dough. But it, this is too firm. This is uh, It's too dry. So we add the, the rest of the, the egg. It's a bit uh, dependent on how large your eggs are, how much, how many eggs you have to use. And now you can see it's it looks like what a sauce that has too much thickener in it, or a, or very bad very bad mashed potatoes. And that's how it has to look because you have to be able to squeeze it out of a tube. And then we put them on a baking pan. I use baking paper. And don't use your fingers. Use two spoons. That's a fine way to do it. No fingers because it's it's uh, sticky like crazy. If you got an ice scoop like this one, that's uh, far the easiest. They don't look any better or become better, but it's it's a lot quicker to do. One of my favorite favorite ways of doing it is using a, a piping bag or a freezing bag. And and here you can see why the consistency had to be as it had. I add this. Dough, again, don't touch with the fingers. You will just spend the rest of the day under the faucet. Then I roll it tightly, so we squeeze it out of the right end when we start squeezing. And then the fold in the bottom, I, I cut that away, so it, it, so it doesn't get in the way. Yeah, this, this is a, a bad pair of scissors. But I, I really did that, you just couldn't see it. Then I squeeze it out, about the thickness of a finger. Well, one of my fingers. So, your thumb, probably. About one, a finger thickness. Two centimeters, a little less than an inch. You don't have to concentrate too hard on making them look pretty and straight and stuff like that, because when you bake them, they swell up and, and they it solves itself. They do become pretty, pretty, pretty uh, by themselves. Uh, they have a ten tendency to soften up because of the steam locked inside of them, so you can cut a small hole in the side. Later you're gonna fill it up with cream, so it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that helps the steam escape and they will, they will keep their shape a lot better. 
and you can find the list of ingredients and the recipe on Quellifood.